All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about that slight delay. We just wanted to make sure everything was up and going with the um, PowerPoint and making sure everything was all right. We're going to wait just maybe one more minute or two to make sure that everyone just gets settled into the room all right. I know that you all have <clears throat> a lot of amazing questions already for our Residence Life team um, that they are excited to answer. Um, and we will get started in just a second. I still see that attendees number climbing though. So I wanna make sure we have everyone kind of settled in. We plateau out before getting started. Um, but just as an introduction, my name is JD Nichols. I'm an assistant dean of admission here at William & Mary. And I am so excited that you are all here tuning in um, for our digital days for admitted students. Just to get us started, would you mind maybe telling us in the chat um, where you are all tuning in from? Unfortunately, we can't be gathered together here today on campus um, due to everything going on. But one of the exciting things about a virtual format is that people can tune in from all around the world. Um, so if you'd like to tell us where you're watching from, we'd really love to hear it. Puerto Rico, Miami, Florida, Pittsburgh, Houston, Texas, but those Maryland, Nova, Philly. Oh my goodness, that was awesome watching that chat blow up. Wow, so cool. Wow, all right. We clearly have students tuning in from all over the world, which is really, really awesome. Um, and with that being said, it seems like we've kind of leveled out. So super exciting to have you all here with us. And I will go ahead and hand it over to Shailen to get started for us today. Hello, um, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us for the Welcome to the Neighborhood session. Um, I'm so glad to be with you today. My name is Shailen Scott, and I'm one of the Assistant Directors in Residence Life. Um, today, our goal is to highlight key components about living on campus and the process for first year room assignments. We'll also share some more general information about residence life. And just remember that today is an overview. If there are really specific questions, we're happy to discuss at the end of the session. And there may be some things that um, we might have to follow up with you based on the specificity of your question. So living on campus, um, we are always excited for students to live on campus with us. Um, living on campus keeps you at the center of everything at William & Mary. It means that you're close to the academic environment and you're close to other resources like dining, recreation, wellness, and even student activities. In addition to just being it being convenient and being on campus, there are lots of other positive outcomes that come from living on campus. That includes just a really big sense of community, which we intentionally develop in each of our residence halls. Um, the other thing that makes it easy is that the cost when you live on campus are all inclusive. So there are really no add-ons. We include cable, utility, utilities, all of those things. So there's only one bill and no surprises. Um, in higher education, we do a lot of research and research confirms that students who live on campus have a higher rate of satisfaction with their college experience and stronger connections to faculty and one another. And finally, the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons that you live on, on, live on campus is that it's important. Um, for social classes of 24 and 25, there is a two year live on residency requirement because we feel it's important for you to be on campus and connected to all of the resources William & Mary has. You heard me mention it before, but one of the most defining features of living on campus is our sense of community. Um, the, next few, the next few slides will share a little bit about our community and then we'll look a little bit more at logistical information, but living in the residence halls means that students are more likely to meet people, get involved, and just have a better overall collegiate experience. We hire approximately 175 student staff members, um, which include resident assistants and master's level professional staff that really devote a significant portion of their time working um, to develop community and to make connections and to help people who are living in our residence halls. Um, the value in engagement by living in the halls is confirmed by um, studies that we administer and students at William & Mary have indicated that living on campus has positively contributed to their sense of belonging here and has positively contributed to their learning. What guides our development of community? Well, there are quite a few things. Um, our foundational 
part, a foundational part of the William and Mary Residence Life Program is our philosophy of self-determination. This allows residents and their communities to make decisions um, regarding their living experiences. We want, to, we want students to have an opportunity to have a say about what happens in their living spaces. This process really begins with roommates who are discussing expectations about their shared living space. So our hope is that every roommate grouping will sit down and discuss what should happen or shouldn't happen in their room. And that's the foundation is the agreement between both roommates or all roommates. Um, this really is the starting place to really talk about priorities like cleanliness, sleep and study schedule, and visitation. Each community is then asked to extend this conversation to include all of the hallmates. And so we have community meetings where residents make decisions about large community spaces. Residents will make decisions around quiet hours, kitchen usage, lounge usage, and access to the building. Um, each of our halls has a governance council, and we call them community councils. And what they help us do is it's students who decide to be leaders within their residential community, and they help us navigate larger concerns and building topics like laundry, laundry room usage, or if there's a challenge in the community, we work with this group of leaders to help us um, address it. Although our goal is to have students navigate all of these topics, the staff that works in the halls are integral. Um, we are connected to every part of what happens and available to students. The second area that's really core to community development for us is one that really encourages residents and the community to be resilient and flourish. So our staff really works to engage with residents individually and as a community to further this philosophy. One of the biggest questions students have is where will I live? So we're now going to talk about some of the logistics of the housing process. How do we decide where residents live? Well, there are lots of different things. One of the first things is that each first year student will fill out the freshman housing application and the lifestyle questionnaire, which becomes available on May 1st at noon and is accessed through the tribe guide, which first year experience will send to you. Um, that guide and that information will be open until May 31st. We ask that students complete the housing application and questionnaire, not a family member, and each student should also think about what they believe their preferences will be once they are away. Um, you're in a very set schedule at home. Typically, you have certain habits, but how do you think it might look different when you move to William & Mary? How might your time change? How might your preferences change? Um, the types of questions that we ask students to ask, that we ask students to respond to vary. Typically, they're questions like that encompass broad categories. How clean would you want the room to be? Like, what, what does cleanliness look like for you? What kind of quiet hours will we have in our space? What do we believe about guests and visitation? Um, and what do we believe about just general courtesies amongst um, the different roommate pairs. And based on that is how we begin to determine where you might live. We encourage you to go to our website and take a look um, at our different communities. If you go to our website, you're able to look not only at the building, but you can also see a short video that will show you a typical room. And um, you also, it goes as detailed as the floor plan. So you also can see the floor plan of the space. Remember, um, we will ask for your preferences, but this is not a preference. I mean, it's not a guarantee. We'll ask you to tell us what you think, but remember it's just a preference and not a guarantee. One of the types of housing that we will talk about because different people have different needs for housing. And so our priority housing includes medical accommodations for housing. And it's really what you need if you need housing for a health reason. Um, you'll see as a part of our residence halls, not all of our residence halls have air conditioning. Um, buildings with air conditioning include Hunt and Tolliver, which will, each room will have a window unit and then central air, 
um, buildings include Lemon and Yates. Um, other priority housing needs include bathroom accommodations and a single room accommodation. And if you feel like you have a need for one of these, the way to do that is to go through our medical accommodations process. Um, this is done through Student Accessibility Services. And so you would go to their website to fill out information and to provide documentation if you needed air conditioning or if you needed a bathroom accommodation or a single room accommodation. Another housing process that we have to meet needs is called adaptive housing. Our adaptive housing process um, and accommodations include looking at how we meet students' needs based on gender identity, religious needs, or recovery from substance abuse. Students wishing to request adaptive housing just need to email our office, um, which they can email at myroom at wm.edu. And then we'll, we will work with you on those adaptive housing needs. Another process to meet needs that we have is called flexible housing. Flexible housing is the process that allows groups of mixed sex according to student records to select housing together. Um, if people choose to use this option, all of the students in this option must be at least 18 years of age at the time of request. Um, if you have additional questions about flexible housing, emailing my room at wm.edu um, would be the best place to start and we can answer any questions that you have. Those are really sort of all the ways and all the places that we look at to determine how we will decide where you live. Um, but one of the biggest pieces of that is filling out the lifestyle questionnaire. This is also known as the roommate questionnaire. Um, I mentioned it before, but we really want you to take some time to fill this out. Um, this helps us to match roommates through identifying cleanliness, wake up and sleep schedules, study habits, how guests might be received in the room and whatever other details that might be able to match people so they would have a good roommate grouping. The majority of our rooms in our first year halls accommodate two people. There are a very limited number of singles, very small. Um, therefore, as much information as you can provide about your living preference is integral so we can better match you to a good roommate. There is also a process for roommates to find each other. Um, a part of the roommate questionnaire allows for roommates to select each other. So what happens is the student sets up a profile um, in our system by describing their preferences and a search by these qualities can, can begin once you provide permission and then students are able to request each other. We work very hard to try to honor any roommate request. In terms of deciding where students live, um, we will be able to tell you all your actual room assignment, room and building um, in mid-July, but they will not be available before then. Mid-July is usually um, right around the time that we'll notify all students of where they will be living. Um, as I said before, if you look on the screen here, this is um, an example of a floor plan in one of our first year halls, Monroe. But all of the first year halls, you can see videos, you can see what the rooms look like. Um, and it will also tell you more about amenities and where the laundry room is and all of the information that you might want to look at in terms of what you would want to know for your residence halls in the fall. Oh, there's that floor plan. Um, amenities. So we have quite a few amenities in the hall, but in your specific room, you can expect that this is the furniture you will have. You'll have a bed with an extra long twin mattress, um, a chest of drawers, you'll either have a closet or wardrobe, and a desk and a chair. Um, and then typically you usually have a recycling bin as well. Cable, internet, wired or wireless are both available. 
And then if you need a phone in your room, you can request one and have one installed. The other thing that comes with your room is ID building access and then um, your key to your room. All of our buildings are controlled through security access 24 hours a day. Other amenities in the halls include laundry. Um, and usually you can pay for laundry either with coins or by putting money on your ID card. Um, it's easy enough. Um, our system, through our system, you're able to monitor how the laundry is going through your cell phone. So you can see how quickly or how far away your laundry is from being done. So you don't have to sit in the laundry room the entire time. Um, building services staff clean common bathrooms and spaces on a regular basis. Um, students are expected to complete their own cleaning. For example, if they use the kitchen, they're responsible for dishes. If they're in a lounge, they're responsible for tidying up when they leave those common area spaces. And students, of course, are responsible for their room and suite bathroom um, cleanliness. So any space that belongs to the student, the student is responsible for um, maintaining. Move-in. So move-in day is a big day for us. We do a lot in a short period of time. Um, in terms of move-in day, students will move in by appointment. Um, there'll be color-coded routes that'll help you get to campus and put you right in the place that you need to be so that you can pick up all the things that you need to move in. Um, we have move-in teams that assist in getting items to rooms, and we move in approximately 1,500 residents in about four hours, um, or about six people a minute. There will be additional information provided by the Residence Life and Student Transition Engagement Program as the date approaches for arriving on campus. So you should expect a lot of information related to move in. And then once you've moved in, the process sort of continues. The first thing you'll do once you move in is you will um, start orientation. And orientation is, um, orientation really starts basically right in that afternoon. So you have to make plans to say goodbye. Um, and as I referred to earlier, there are a lot of staff that are available on that day to be resources to you and beyond. Um, professional staff, head residents, hall directors, resident assistants, orientation aides, all of those people will be available and willing to help. I mentioned this before, but I just wanted to reiterate that we do have a four semester live on requirement. So that means for your first, your freshman and sophomore years at William and Mary, you are required to live on campus. Um, and again, we talked about the reasons why we think it enhances your college experience and we think it makes your college experience better, both academically and relationally. And then after your first year, um, the way you select housing would be a room selection process. We have students um, commit to us and then they're able to select their housing and select their roommates, select suite mates, select apartment mates, all through our online housing portal. Um, and remember that all of any time that you are committing to residence life, you're committing to us for the full academic year. And finally, um, we'd like to invite questions from the audience. We'll be available to um, for the next few minutes to respond to any questions that you all have. Awesome. We have a couple questions built up already, so that's exciting. Um, so first of all, is there an online list of what is approved to have in rooms? Um, if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, I was also just going to send the housing contract to the chat, which I feel like will outline some of that. Some of those things. Yeah, I think looking at that housing contract will give you a great idea of the things that are um, allowed and not. We don't have a general list, but in that moving guide that you'll get over the summer, It'll give you lots of helpful hints so you don't bring too much um, or not enough. So we try to give you a little bit of a guide and some of the move-in information that you'll receive later on this summer. But the housing um, contract is a good place to start. 
Awesome. And we are having questions rolling in now that we're getting started. So um, do students who are admitted earlier, for example, during the ED process, have priority in their select in their selection process? No. And that's why we everything starts on May 1st and everybody has the same opportunity. Awesome. OK. Uh, so what is move-in day going to look like during this pandemic? Are parents and family members allowed to help with the move? Typically, last year we allowed um, one to two family members to help, and we spaced out move-in over time, so that way people weren't in proximity the way that we did move-in. So we will likely do something very similar for um, this fall. Awesome. Um, the, the kind of follow-up question, how will staying on campus work next year with COVID-19? Are you expecting kind of similar restrictions so far or are we still waiting for word? Yeah, I think we're still waiting for word because we expect that it will be different, but we've done this whole year in the year of COVID um, with some access restrictions and numbers, lower numbers, in the ways that people can gather. So I anticipate that um, while there might be some changes, we definitely know how to operate during a COVID time and, and would continue similarly in the fall. Awesome. Um, so what is the roommate request process like? So it's pretty easy. You, um, again, once you get your information, you'll be able to go in the housing portal. And if you already know who you want to select, you'll let us know that and we'll do our best. And then if you want to try to find somebody, you'll be able to do that through the housing portal as well. Awesome. Um, so just to be clear, Monroe does not have AC, correct? No, it does not. Um, are microwaves allowed in dorms? Yes. Um, so how are dorm buildings split up for gender slash sex? And generally, how does this work for transgender students? I believe you maybe went into this a little bit, um, but would you mind covering it again? Absolutely. Traditionally, our floors are housed by sex by floor. Um, the way we work with transgender students is through our flexible housing model. And so um, we end flexible housing and adaptive housing. So you would basically email my room and um, either set up an appointment with us or tell us your situation and we will be able to work to accommodate whatever need you might have. Um, so could you go over the process for someone who is wanting to um, select um, a specific roommate, so someone that they might know who's coming in as well, um, and what that process would look like? I know we just touched on that, but kind of exactly what that would look like if you have a specific person in mind. It would look pretty much the same. When you log on to the housing portal to complete your application, there'll be places for you to note that or say that. Um, it's hard for me to explain it to you because you haven't seen the housing portal, but it's all intuitive and all in one, all in one place. And if you get stuck, you can either email my room at wm.edu or living at wm.edu and someone would be available to help you. And in general, it's important for them to probably know the 930 number of the person that they, or the 93 number of the person. Maybe, um, but generally, if you're going through the housing portal, there's a way for you to find them in the system. Oh, okay, great. Oh, okay, yeah. awesome. So you don't even have to share a whole lot of information with one another. Perfect. Are there utensils and plates in the kitchens? No, well, sometimes it depends. Typically there are items that you can check out in the duty office. So we haven't done that during COVID, um, but typically we will have utensils or pots and pans available for students to check out to use. But on general, we don't have um, plates and utensils in the kitchens. So, um, so I've heard that some dorms um, have different costs, um, specifically Lemon Hall. Um, would you be able to explain some of that kind of varying differences? Yes, um, on our website, there is a place where you can see what the rates were for this school year. And I think the projected rates for next year, but some of our buildings have different amenities and, are, and do have a different cost. How guaranteed is it that we'll get our first or second choice dorm? Are you allowed to list a different roommate for each dorm you're interested in? 
No, you can't list a different roommate. Once you sort of decide on a roommate, that is the, you've decided. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of your preferences, it's hard to say because we haven't seen the entire first year classes preference. So um, I think it just depends on where everybody falls and, and how we assign. It's hard to say what your chances are. Um, okay. So do you rate residence halls or is it random which one are you, you are assigned to? I think there's a place on the questionnaire where you can say if you want to be in a smaller hall or a larger hall. Um, and that's generally what we're looking at is do you want to be in a bigger building or a smaller building? And there's a little bit more context in that moving guide that you're going to get on May 1st. Um, um, so for rooms without air conditioning, are portable air conditioners allowed? And what appliances might not be allowed? No, um, window AC units are allowed. And when... Oh my, everyone. I think that Shylin's computer may have just shut off, but I'm assuming that she'll be joining us in just a second. Um, so let me see if I can continue answering your questions because I am a former William and Mary student myself and I was involved in the orientation process. So I will do my best to continue answering your questions while we wait for Shylin. Um, so she was answering a question about air conditioning. So you are allowed to request in-unit air conditioning units. You are not allowed to bring your own in-unit, in um, in-window air conditioning unit. Um, so if you'd wanted to bring, um, but I'm not sure about portable air conditioners. So maybe I'll continue to leave that one for Shylin. Um, do students have to move out each after each semester or do they just move out at the end of the year? So students just have to move out once at the end of the year year. Um, you can leave everything in your room during the break, um, during the winter break. So that's kind of great. Um, just make sure to kind of take home the essentials that you need if you're gonna go home, toothbrush, toothpaste, whatever you might need. Um, all right. Are Monroe scholars guaranteed their first choice between Monroe and Tolliver? Um, I don't believe you are guaranteed your first choice. You are guaranteed to get one of those two if you'd like them, but you are not guaranteed your first choice in between those two. Do the halls without AC have it in the lounges or not at all? Yes, so um, so halls have it in the lounge, um, regardless, of no regardless of whether or not they have AC in the rooms, there will be air conditioning in the lounge of each of the dorms. Great question. So like lounge and kitchen area will have um, air conditioning. Can a non-Monroe student be a roommate of a Monroe scholar in Monroe or Tolliver Hall? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but I'm going to leave that question again to ask until Shiling joins us again. If I submit my housing request earlier, am I more likely to get my first choice? No, so it is not based on um, the time that you submit your documents. It is based on the kind of um, roommate pairings and then filling dorms. Um, so depending on the questions on your housing questionnaire um, and on your roommate's housing questionnaire and things like that, that's how kind of decisions are made. Um, it does not depend on how early you submit that document. Okay, so there are a couple of questions about links that I'm going to start sending to the chat really quickly. There's one about um, medical, um, AC units for residence halls. So I'm trying to find that one really quick. Um, there we go, here it is. So this is um, the main link that you can go to for requesting those. And I see we have Shylin joining us again. So I will stop doing my best to answer questions and turn it back over to her. <laughs> Glad you were able to join us again. You are muted currently. My computer just shut down. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. We reacted well. I started answering questions on my own, realized I don't know as much as I thought I did, um, but I've just been so trying to send some helpful links in the meantime. Um, so you were answering a question about air conditioning and whether or not portable units are allowed. 
Yes, um, only the window units are allowed. Um, I know we have some now that are those big units that sit inside the room, but we only approve window units. And um, you can install them yourself, but facilities management will come back and check your work. Um, and you can only have an AC unit if you've had a medical accommodation. So remember, you have to go through student accessibility services to get in a medical accommodation in order to have an AC unit in our halls that don't have air conditioning. Okay, so they shouldn't just show up with a window unit to try and put into their room if they haven't gone through that process. Right, they should definitely have gone through the accommodations process before coming. Perfect. All right. Um, so can a non-Monroe student be a roommate of a Monroe scholar in Monroe or Tolliver Hall? Yes, um, that is easy. Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I sent the, I'm um, sorry, there was just a question about the air conditioning link and I sent that one to the chat, so hopefully you got that. Um, what percentage of freshmen choose to go random with their roommate assignment? Um, at least 60%. Um, okay. Sometimes we have, more than 60. I mean, sometimes it's 50 50, but typically at least 60% of more um, of our incoming students don't have a roommate in mind when they come in. Awesome. Um, so, hello, Monroe Scholar here. The website mentions priority registrations for Monroe and Tolliver. Because of this, what exactly does that entail, particularly if we're interested in rooming with a non Monroe Scholar? So, again, that same kind of question, but a little different. Yeah. So, essentially, it basically just says when I think on the back end of our system, we know who the Monroe scholars are and we make sure that if they've preference Monroe or Tolliver, that that's, that's where we try to assign them. But selecting a roommate, whether or not they're a Monroe scholar is the same process. And in both of those buildings, those buildings aren't exclusive for Monroe scholars. And we always have students that are not designated as scholars who also live in those buildings. So there was a question about the costs between Lemon Hall compared to other residence halls. So I just sent a link to the chat um, that outlines the costs for, I believe it was the previous year. Hold on, let me confirm. 2020 to 2021 housing costs. Um, so that can give you an idea of the differences there. Um, hold on a second, let me see. Um, what is the earth earliest possible move in day? Are you familiar with that quite yet, or should I try and find that quickly? <laughs> I think um, you can try to find it. I know that it is Friday, and I don't want to get the date wrong. Yeah. I think it is the 24th of August, but I'm not confident about that. But remember, as a first year student, you all will be the first to move in. And um, basically move in starts the day that you all move in. So people really don't move in earlier than that day. All right, here we go. So the link, so the day is August 27th is move in. Um, occasionally freshmen who are athletes may move in a little bit earlier, but that is a unique circumstance. Yes. Um, Okay, so this is a really specific question, but how hard is it to get into Brown Hall or other small dorms? Generally, it's not hard at all because the distribution amongst the class, like people have different preferences and it usually just works. It works out and we have enough smaller facilities and smaller residence halls that um, that it, it probably, I don't know about Brown specifically, but if you'd like a small hall experience, I think we, ha I think you would be able to, um, to have that. Awesome. Um, so then which residence halls have suite style bathrooms? It depends. So it would be best to look on our floor plans, um, but most of our first year halls have hall style bathrooms. There might be a few suite bathrooms mixed in, but most of it is hall style. Um, the place where you would likely see suites would be um, lemon, at, would be lemon, would be the place where you would probably see the most suites. There might be one or two suites in Yates, but generally most of that is, is hall bathrooms. Rooms, the same with Botetot and GGV. 
Um, so do residence halls have cafeterias attached or are those separate? The cafeterias are all separate. Um, they, but they're close by, they're not far. So if you are in Batatai, Yates or GGV, the cafeteria is a short walk away, as well as if you're in Monroe or um, Tolliver, Hunt, Reeves, Brown, um, it's not a far walk to get to the marketplace. Um, so someone came late and they're saying, so you might have covered this already, but could you just go through the process one more time of kind of students ranking preferred dorms and when that process begins? All of that is in that um, first year roommate questionnaire that you will have access to on May 1st. Awesome. Okay. So again. Sorry, trying to make sure I'm getting some new questions. There are a lot of duplicates. Um, so there's someone asked if freshmen can get sweet housing. Again, if you're living in Lemon and possibly others, there might be some opportunities for sweet housing. But again, most likely there will be a hall bathroom. Um, if we wish to have guests stay on campus with us, for example, siblings or friends from high school, how would that work? That is all predicated on your room, on your roommate. So that's where we start with the baseline foundation of our relationships. Your roommate has to agree to any guests that you want in the room. So that would be an ongoing discussion with you and your roommate to determine who could come and stay and for how long. And ultimately, if your roommate said that they weren't okay with that, then that's what the answer would be. Um, are you able to give an overview on how to become an RA? Sure. Um, so our RA selection process starts each year in the fall, like right around um, the end of November, beginning of December. Um, we start, we open it for applications and people submit an application and then go through an interview process. And we select and people would know in the spring semester whether or not they'd been. Um, selected for one of our hall roles. Awesome. Um, I believe I answered this already, but is rooming, is rooming assignments first come first serve? So in, in kind of another wording, the earlier they submit their housing documents. No, it's um, designed to be fair to everybody, which is why it opens on a certain date and closes on a certain date. So everybody has the opportunity to complete the application. Um, are we allowed to bring a television into our dorm room? Yes. And along the same lines, an electric tea kettle. Yes, we do allow electric tea kettles. Awesome. Um, I've heard that there have been some cases of mold in residence halls. How has this been addressed? So we are always, if any student or resident that lives here suspects that there might be mildew or mold in a residence hall, whether that's in their room or a common area, the first thing to do is submit a service request to facilities management. And essentially after you submit that service request are the environmental health and safety team of the university will come and test and determine what that substance is and determine how to re remediate it if it um, indeed is a mildew or a mold, and then we address it appropriately. There was a follow-up question about the resident assistant. Can they apply as freshmen to be a resident assistant for their sophomore year? No, our staff is already hired <laughs> before um, first-year students are um, have lived on campus. So um, no, it is designed for students who have, for sophomores, juniors, seniors. Okay, but so, but they could apply to be an RA as a freshman for their sophomore year on campus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Um, do requests for bed lofts or for mini fridge and AC go on the housing form? No, we do those things through um, a contract company called Dorms Direct. And essentially you would work with them um, independently to secure a bed loft or a micro fridge unit. They also have carpets and headboards and couches. I mean, an assortment of things that you could put in 
in your residence hall room and they deliver it prior to your arrival. Awesome. I was just trying to find a quick link. I'm going to send a link to the chat. This is a to the dorms direct website. Feel free to check that out and see what they offer. Um, do all of the dorms have a sink? I'm guessing they meant in the room. Yeah. Not all. Some do and some don't. So if you're able to go on those floor plans, like Yates definitely have in sync rooms. I think Brown might, but I'm not sure about all of them. So you'd have to go to that floor plan to, to take a look at who has sinks and rooms. Um, can I bring my own bed risers? Yes. Um, do RAs get free or reduced housing? Yes, that is a part of the compensation for the RA position. Okay. Um, are we able to change roommates in the duration of a semester? Yes. Um, if for whatever reason, if you'd like to, um, I don't know if you can change roommates. Um, if you wanted to change rooms, yes. If you want to change roommates, I don't know how we would do that other than one of the roommate pairs changing rooms. If you know somebody else that would want to switch with you, if it was a mutual switch, I think we would be able to work with you to try to make that happen if there were two people that wanted to switch between rooms as long as their roommates were okay with that. Awesome. Um, are there uh, fraternity and sorority houses on campus? Yes, we do have. Um, we do have quite a bit of fraternity and sorority housing on campus, but first year students um, are not eligible to live in fraternity and sorority housing as a first year. Awesome. Um, will move in scheduled dates and times be available mid July when room assignments are given? Yeah, I don't know if all of it will be available at that time, but it should be available um, shortly after that. But it, there will be some information provided in the moving guide, I'm sorry, in the tribe guide that you'll receive May 1st, but then it'll give you an indication of when to expect other communication. So um, that tribe guide will give you a lot of things to anticipate and when to anticipate them. Um, I have medicines that need to be kept in a certain temperature range to work. Should I apply for a medical accommodation? You could. Um, you could apply for a medical accommodation, or you also could decide to bring your own refrigerator for your room where you might keep it. Um, so I think both of those um, might be good options to do to think about. Um, definitely go ahead and look into the medical accommodation, but then also think about maybe if bringing your own refrigerator for your room might be um, an option that you could consider as well. Awesome. Um, so are there full kitchens in residence halls? And if so, what is included in them? Um, and then could you also go through the process about what it might look like to kind of um, take out pots and pans from the duty office? Yes, so um, every residence hall has a full kitchen and typically that means there is um, a stove top, a, an oven, a microwave, and a full kitchen sink, cabinets, all of those things. Um, the way that you check out things is through the duty office. So I don't know if you all remember, I talked about community council and hall governance. So over the years, those groups um, of leaders in the residence halls have purchased supplies for the benefit of all residents. And so those supplies are kept in the duty office. The duty office is the place that's staffed, is the office in every area on campus, every residential area, that's staffed every day from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. where residents can go if they're locked out, but also they can go and um, check out pots and pans, broom, dustpan, um, different duty offices have different items available to check out. 
And again, you know, this year we suspended that due to COVID. So we'll see what, what the fall might look like. Awesome. So somebody asked about a list of first year dorms. I just sent that link to the chat for students to kind of check out on their own. Um, kind of follow up question to the kitchen. Um, can the student bring their own bakeware and utensils? Absolutely. And sometimes that works out well because you can go, you can bake something that you'd like, and then you can take it back to your room. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about cleaning up, cleaning the cake pan up or checking it out or checking it back in. So that's completely fine. Are there any curfews for residence halls? No, generally we don't have curfews. Um, for your building, your, ex, your ID will let you in and out anytime, but you can't go to every single residence hall on campus and do that. But for the hall that you live in, you'll always have access with your ID card. And we don't necessarily track when you're coming and going, nor do we say you have to be back <laughs> by a certain time. Um, so would my roommate and I need to have the same rankings for our dorm choices? Not necessarily. If um, the if your biggest priority is to be roommates, then that we would we would try as much as we can to honor your roommate preferences. If you have different rankings, um, you'll end up one of I don't know how the assignments team exactly does it but they'll determine um, where you live. I don't know if it's based on, I don't know how they determine that. I don't know whose preferences they would use, but um, if you had similar preferences, it would be easier to try to accommodate those. Um. Sorry, just trying to <laughs> look through all of these questions. You guys are doing a great job at giving us so many questions. Um, so are, are we able to stay on campus during winter break? Only if you, you would have to have a special circumstance or permission. Typically all of the halls close for winter break. Um, we might, there might be some circumstances like maybe an international student um, or something like that, that we would allow people to stay over the break, but it's not likely. Uh, it would be a very special circumstance. Okay. Um, so around how many outlets can we expect in the rooms? Generally, I know you have at least two, but going on the website to look at that room detail that I showed you on one of those slides would be the best way because those um, floor plans do show you not only how many outlets you have, but the location of them. Awesome. Um, so are coffee machines allowed in, in or only specific types? No, generally coffee machines are allowed. Um, I think, you know, people have little Keurigs and some people mm -hmm. have a more, you know, more of the old school coffee mm -hmm. machine, but either of those are okay for your room. Awesome. Um, so there are a couple of questions about like bug infestations. One said, I'm absolutely petrified of cockroaches. Is there any way to avoid being in a dorm that has them? Well, Williamsburg is, was built on a swamp. So William and Mary is on a swamp. So we naturally do have um, bugs that occur here, but we also have an extermination service that we work with through facilities management. So there's no way I can tell you, you'll never see one or you'll never have one. But what I can tell you is that when you call, the exterminator will come, they will come to your room personally, they will treat your room and talk with you about um, making, trying to make sure that there are no habits that are fostering bugs either in your community or your room and they will treat it to, um, to exterminate. Um, um, 
So I think this is a good question for everyone to probably hear. Can you have large items such as a mini fridge delivered by Amazon in advance? Um, will the mailroom deliver to the room prior to moving? No, um, we are unable to do that. You will have to bring all of the things with you. Um, and the reason that we can't do that is because I don't know if the mailroom would be able to accommodate it. It's a better question for, for them. But um, things can't be delivered to our residence halls because there's no access. So we are unable, um, even when you're here, you you're just unable to get things delivered to the residence hall because people can't get in and out of the building. Um, so everything, all deliveries go through the post office, but in terms of move-in, you have to bring everything with you. Awesome. Um, so are bed lofts one height or are they customizable? That's a good question for dorms direct with the lofts. The beds that we provide are adjustable. So the frame can move up and down, um, or I should say the, the box frame can move up and down um, within the frame of your bed. But in terms of bed loss, um, that would be a good question for dorms direct. Awesome. Um... Some great questions. I'm trying to make sure I'm seeing all of them. Um, so how is roommate conflict handled? By the residence life? Well, there are a lot of different ways. Essentially, we try to start with originally what the roommates agreed upon at the beginning of the semester. So when we ask everybody to sit down and do a shared living agreement, it has lots of things on it. Everything from cleanliness, guest, visitation, um, sleeping and waking hours, all of those things are, we ask people to lay those out together and agree on that at the beginning of the semester. And then the first place we start is to revisit and to see whether or not, um, to see where we are not in agreement on that shared living agreement. and. If we can't fix it there, we have a lot of options. You can work with your resident assistant to do a mediation. You could work with the area director who's a professional staff member to do a mediation, or you don't have to do that. If we have space available, you can switch rooms. And essentially it's easy enough. You just go into the housing portal and apply for a room change. And if we have space, then we're able to move you to a different assignment but we will sit and work with roommate peers as long as it takes to try to help them to have a good relationship um, and to resolve any roommate conflicts that might be happening. Someone's asking how students should find or access the tribe guide once it goes live on May 1st. It will be emailed to you um, several times. It'll also be available likely through your um, application portal as well. Um, I know some dorms like Brown are a little bit removed from campus. What is the average walking commute and how does living in a less central dorm affect one's freshman experience? I think it depends, but I think most students would say it would only take you 10 to 15 minutes to get any place on campus, no matter where you live. Um, so I think it's relatively easy. A lot of students also um, will bring bikes. Um, bikes are not allowed in the residence halls, but we do have bike racks um, where you can lock your bike up out front of your hall. And so if you were worried about commute distance, like maybe that could be a good option for you to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and someone in the chat was asking um, if we can't visit campus, like how are we supposed to get a sense for which dorm is right? That's something that I would definitely recommend students check out is um, look at the list of freshmen that I sent to the chat. Um, but then also um, you can look at a campus map and see kind of maybe what areas of campus you'd like to live closer to, um, things like that. All of your freshman residence halls are going to have a great sense of community regardless of where you're living, um, and you're going to have easy access to all of campus. So at that point, it's really just kind of about priority in terms of where you want to be on campus and things like that. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. How are the community and government councils chosen? 
Um, generally at the beginning of the year, we ask the community like who's interested and we do a small election process and we mm -hmm. vote people in and we generally have enough roles for everybody. So we have our executive board, but then we have representatives from every hall. Um, and so it generally works out that if people want to be involved, we have a place for them to be involved in hall leadership. Do we receive mail slash packages at our dorm room? No, there's a mail room in the Sadler Center. Sorry, I figured I would go ahead and just answer that one. <laughs> um, okay. Can you talk more about what is asked on the room search um, questionnaire, the housing questionnaire? Yeah, that lifestyle questionnaire, um, the big topics are cleanliness, um, what, what does cleanliness look like to you? What do you expect? Um, quiet hours, um, sleeping and waking hours. So what's your typical schedule? When do you get up? When do you go to bed? Um, and I think another big one that we ask about is um, how do you see your room? Like, do you see your room as a social place or a quiet place? Um, so another one, it doesn't really talk about guests in that way, but it talks about how you view, how you view your room. Um, in order to maximize the number of outlets, could I, could I bring a surge protector? Yes, you have to bring a, um, surge protector that automatically shuts off if it overloads. So you can't get one without an on off switch, but as long as you have a surge protector with an on off switch that is approved and you can't plug surge protectors into other surge protectors, but one per outlet is fine. And are extension cords allowed? Extension cords are not allowed. So um, surge protectors, yes, extension cords, no. Gotcha. Um, and are we allowed to hang things on the walls? Yes, you are allowed to hang things, but in ways that don't damage the walls. So um, you just have to try, like not using duct tape would be great. Um, but yes, you are allowed to hang things. Awesome. Um, so um, tips, generally what most students use, I would say. Um, also, my connection is cool, so let me know if you have any. Um, does William and Mary allow for music practice in halls, or do they provide separate areas for that? We do have practice rooms in some halls. Um, And in some of our buildings, we have space for people to practice. Um, often it could be a lounge area. There's some lounges that maybe if another student isn't using that isn't next to um, bedrooms, that would be great for practice space. And then I know the music building also has space for students to practice, but I do think there could be place for practice that wouldn't be disruptive to the community and the residence hall. Is laundry typically hard to plan out or are there ample amounts of washers and dryers? It depends on where you live. Um, generally, we try to have a washer and dryer per every um, 36 or 37 students. So um, some places will have more, some places will have less, but I think people get into a rhythm and so it's not very hard to find time to do to do your laundry, a space where the machines are free. And it's easy enough to go um, on the website and check to see which machines are free and empty. So I think students sort of find a pattern over time. Awesome, all right. Well, it's been over an hour. Um, do you have any kind of final piece of advice for students going through this process? No, we're just very excited to have you come and join our communities. And we're looking forward to welcoming you in the fall. And then I know there are still 42 active questions out there that we weren't able to get to 43. One more just came in. Um, if you have more, please feel free to kind of send those to Residence Life. Their email address is living at wm.edu. Um, and they would be more than happy to kind of answer any questions that you might have about the process. Thank you so much for tuning in for our digital DFAS programming. I hope you enjoyed this session on Welcome to the Neighborhood with Residence Life. Um, all these sessions will be posted online within the next week or two. And we're having them transfer.
transcribed and uploaded to the welcome page for all students to be able to utilize throughout the coming weeks. Um, but with that being said, please enjoy the rest of your night. And thank you so much to Shylin, um, And thank you to everyone else for tuning in. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.